Happy Thanksgiving. I, uh, I wanted to do a video today that, that steps away from the, the Maddox vs. Dick lawsuit to kind of give a preview of what the other content on the channel will be like um, going forward. Uh, we're not abandoning the lawsuit by any means. Um, I've, got, I've got some stuff planned for what we already have, and I'm anxiously awaiting the drop of the answer documents from uh, Dick Masterson and companies legal teams and uh, I'm I'm really excited to see what what they come up with um, so when those drop we'll go through those and uh, hopefully have a jolly good time um, but for now we're gonna talk about another another popular figure or unpopular uh, depends on your perspective we're gonna talk about Trump um, I was thinking today, for some reason, and I came, you know, I, was, I, I thought, I bet that Slate or HuffPo or someone has an article criticizing Trump for pardoning a turkey, right? Because that'd just be convenient uh, for them to do that. And they, they don't, kinda. I mean, I was being cynical and snarky. Um, so they don't really have a specific video doing that, but or a specific uh, article doing that. But they do, they do actually have an article that references it and attempts to just get a jab in here and there, which is to be expected. Um, and so what I want to do uh, is read through this article real quick. And I know a lot of guys uh, read through articles on the web and and, and do something, but I'm going to add a little bit of commentary because this article actually gets into something that is much more politically and legally relevant than whether or not uh, Trump pardoned a turkey properly or something like that. Um, so the headline, to give you a little sense of uh, the flavor you're in for, uh, this is from Huffington Post, right? Trump pardons turkey in Thanksgiving ceremony you didn't think could get any weirder. Because apparently we all think that Thanksgiving ceremonies uh, involving the White House are weird and can't get weirder I, I guess I don't know it's such a weird it's really a weird headline um, I don't know what they're reaching for I don't it doesn't matter anyway uh, on November 21st this was a couple days ago but um, President Donald Trump who has raised eyes, eyebrows by mulling his power to pardon as investigators probe possible ties between his 2016 election, election campaign in Russia, used his authority in a less controversial way on Tuesday to pardon a Thanksgiving turkey. He didn't use his authority, but this is a nod to the whole whole charade of the, the idea of pardoning a turkey. I got it, I got it. Joined by his wife Melania and their son Baron, Trump entered the Rose Garden for the annual presidential tradition and granted freedom to a large white bird named Drumstick. The White House is nothing but dad jokes, and that is long before Trump. I'm pleased to report that, unlike millions of other turkeys at this time of year, Drumstick has a very, very bright future ahead of him, Trump said. Uh, the Republican president couldn't resist referring to his predecessor, former Democratic President Barack Obama, who pardoned two turkeys named Tater and Tot last year. Apparently, he, he needed to resist doing this uh, because reasons that we're not sure of. Um, but anyway, so Trump says, uh, as many of you know, I've been very active in overturning a number of executive actions by my predecessor, Trump quipped. However, I have been informed by the White House Counsel's Office and Tater Tot's, uh, yeah, that Tater, Tot, Tater and Tot's pardons cannot, under any circumstances, be revoked. Ha ha ha, very funny. Um, you know, they, they talk about this as if he's he's referring to Obama, which he does. I mean, he refers to him sort of as, you know, as his predecessors. But this is a jab at himself. Like, this is self-deprecating humor. And, uh, and this is the environment we live in. No charity um, for the opposition. And, and that's fine as long as we understand that's what's going on. But, um, you know, Trump's taking a swipe at himself uh, in a lighthearted way. Whatever. Uh, the article goes on very briefly. The turkeys will live in an enclosure at a nearby University of Virginia Tech. And allegations of potential... Uh, then, sorry, I'm jumping into this last paragraph. 
but this is a big step from the the whole theme of the video here or the article i keep calling it a video uh this is a step from the theme of the article um so this is kind of important this is the last paragraph allegations of potential ties between trump's presidential campaign in moscow have loomed over the white house and investigations are ongoing doesn't have anything to do with thanksgiving or turkeys or but it does have a little bit to do with pardons maybe uh trump and moscow have denied collusion in a message on Twitter in July, Trump noted that as president, he had, quote, complete power to pardon. So I wanted to talk about that because that's where HuffPo wanted to go with this. Um, they decided that they needed to, they couldn't resist referring to Trump, right? Like they're criticizing him for being uh, unable to resist referring to Obama. Here they can't resist making a political statement about Donald Trump. And they're using the, the, the song and dance of pardoning these turkeys to get into his power to pardon. Now here's the interesting thing. Trump is basically right. I don't know what HuffPo is doing, like bringing this in, because the, the editorial uh, perspective actually doesn't come out. That's the end of the article. It's just Trump noted that as president, he had complete power to pardon. So I can't tell you exactly what HuffPo is saying because to do so, I have to infer their intent and therefore I have to engage my own biases and my assumptions about their things, which I'm going to do because it's uh, this is America, Jack, and there's not much they can do about it. So what HuffPo, I believe, is doing here is trying to use this idea of the, the pardon to... Um, they're trying to make a political attack on Trump and his and his presumed ability or inability to pardon, right? They've talked a lot, a lot, not they being HuffPo, the media in general has talked a lot about where the president's power to pardon is. They've talked a lot about obstruction of justice, uh, mainly due to Trump's comments to Comey about uh, Flynn, right? And... Um, and they basically suggested that, that Trump's statements to Comey about Flynn were tantamount to obstruction of justice, which is a strange claim, right? Um, the idea that a president can obstruct justice is, is difficult to get your head around. So I want to I transition here. Uh, and talk to you about the U.S. Constitution. Uh, so, United States Constitution, Article 2, Section 2, Paragraph 1, um, blah, blah, blah. The President shall be Commander-in-Chief of the Army and Navy of the United States and of the Militia of the several states when called into the actual service of the United States. Uh, he may require the opinion and writing of the Principal Officer of each of the Executive Departments, upon any subject relating to the duties of their respective offices, comma, and here the, the founders drop a random bombshell um, in the middle of this whole thing, uh, and he shall have power to grant reprieves and pardons for offenses against the United States, except in cases of impeachment. So, uh, the power to pardon from the president is what's called a plenary power. Uh, a plenary power is one without a um, political check from another branch, right? It's exclusive to the, United, to the uh, executive branch, to the president himself. It does not require approval from Congress. It cannot be overturned from, by Congress. It cannot be challenged or overturned by uh, the Supreme Court, presumably. Um, I guess if he attempted to pardon someone uh, who is being impeached, there would have to be some sort of ruling. Um, we haven't really had any test for this, uh, but impeachment, um, and I, I won't go through the impeachment process. Uh, I won't read through it, but the basic summary is an impeachment action is brought in the House of Representatives. Uh, the impeachment is heard by the Senate, um, and there isn't a constitutional rule on how that hearing occurs uh, in, in the... In the instance of impeaching a president, um, that's generally heard by the entire Senate. In the instance of impeaching a lesser official than the president, uh, they don't have to be. 
Um, it can be the impeachment can be done by a committee. Um, there is a Supreme Court case on this. Uh, it's United States versus Nixon or Nixon versus United States. I don't quite remember, but it's not Richard Nixon. It is a it is a federal judge, not not former President Nixon. Um, it is a federal judge Nixon who was, uh, I believe, found guilty of bribery um, and uh, and some other issues. Was in prison, but maintained sh his judgeship and had to be impeached, if I remember right. And uh, like I could look this up, but. Do you guys care? If you do, drop me a note, and I can get more thorough on these things. But uh, and if you want me to go through that case in a separate video, by all means, tell me, and I will break it down in depth and detail. But at a very high level, um, his his uh, impeachment proceedings were done before a committee, and he challenged the legitimacy of the committee to hear. His impeachment, he decided that it should be heard by the entire Senate. The Senate disagreed, uh, and the Supreme Court ruled with the Senate and said, you know, you don't have to have the entire Senate overhearing your impeachment. Um, the Senate itself can determine its own rules on how impeachments are heard. Long story short, uh, we don't have any real um, precedent of, of a president trying to pardon someone who's being impeached, but impeachment isn't actually a crime. Impeachment usually follows a criminal prosecution of some sort. Not always. It's not necessary for that to happen. Uh, the The Constitution simply says high crimes and misdemeanors, which aren't really defined anywhere. So the there's there's a theory out there that the president can be impeached pretty much for whatever he wants, or anyone. Anyone can be impeached for, for basically whatever, because anything could be a, quote, high crime or misdemeanor. Um, and, and we don't have guidance from the founders on it. That's it's a theory, right? We haven't tested this. We haven't tested this. Uh, all of the impeached presidents were impeached for actual crimes. Um, most recently, of course, being uh, Bill Clinton, who was impeached for lying under oath. Anyway, uh, the question um, that HuffPo is trying to get to is, is what, what is Trump's power to pardon? Uh, and this is this is the whole obstruction of justice uh, dilemma that that the media is facing. Really, I mean, the media are the only people facing the obstruction of justice charge. Um, like there there isn't a charge against Donald Trump of obstruction of justice from the FBI, despite them presumably, if he's if he's guilty of it, uh, they would presumably have all the evidence they need um, with the Comey letters. Uh, with Trump's statements overtly to the media, uh, all of this stuff is out in the open. So if he obstructed justice, they would have ample evidence to prosecute him, but they, they haven't brought charges. Um, here's the deal. It's logically difficult for the president to obstruct justice. Uh, it, it, it's extremely hard because they have the power to, to pardon um, and grant reprieves. So there, those are two separate powers. Um, I'm going to go first. I'm going to talk about reprieves very briefly because they don't really apply here. Uh, the, a reprieve is just basically foregoing commuting a sentence, right? So um, you're guilty of the crime. Uh, you're, you're sentenced to do some sort of, of remediation. Either you're, you're sentenced to jail time. Um, you're sentenced to community service or to pay a huge fine. And the president comes in and he grants a reprieve from the service of that sentence, but he doesn't remove the crime. This has uh, implications on things like voting rights, right? Like felons um, have their voting rights suspended uh, for a time or potentially indefinitely. Um, certain violent crimes, uh, specifically crimes of domestic violence under federal law, prevent you from owning a firearm for example, for the rest of your life. Uh, so, like, granting a reprieve as opposed to a pardon can have implications. Um, uh, let's see. Big uh, big news on reprieves was um, George Bush, as he was leaving office, I believe it was, uh, there were two two guys, uh, border, border Patrol guys, Ramos and Campion, if I remember right. Uh, many people called for their pardon, um, they were they were convicted of using excessive force, if I remember right, against uh, someone 
accused of illegally crossing the border. Uh, they, they were uh, said to have handled them roughly, and many, many, many people uh, had asked for their pardon. Um, there, were, there were public petitions, uh, there were news stories about it, um, and, and importantly, George Bush did not pardon them. Uh, he did grant, he commuted their sentence, so he grant, he used his reprieve power, and, and that makes a political statement in a lot of people's minds. Um, I know many, many conservative people were very upset that, uh, that Bush did not grant that, um, pardon, that he just simply commuted their sentence, and so now they, they as officers, former officers of the Border Patrol have this, uh, this infraction on their record, um, probably prevents them from having uh, those same jobs back and maybe maybe leave. I, I don't actually know if they're felonies or not. They might be. Um, didn't expect to talk about them, but that's how my brain works. Anyway, the other prong of this power is a pardon. Pardon for offenses against the United States. Um, that has really been expanded like the idea of an offense against the United States is really, I mean, like it's, it's, uh, it's really broad now. Yeah. You do not have to commit a crime against the United States specifically, um, for the president to grant you a pardon. That's been, that's been widely expanded to cover up other things. Um, but, uh, the pardon power does not, um, it's not restricted to a post-conviction power, right? You don't have to be pardoned um, after being convicted of a crime. That's that's not in the Constitution. Courts don't hold that way. And throughout history, the president has had the power to grant a preemptive pardon. Prior to charges even being filed, the president can actually pardon. So when President Trump um, talks to Comey uh, and, and he... First of all, I, I disagree with how this is characterized, but if he says, you know, Comey's a good guy, I hope I hope everything, or not Comey, Flynn's a good guy, I hope everything turns out okay for him, um, I don't necessarily consider that any sort of intervening sentence or in interference with justice in any sort of way. Um, I don't think Comey took that as an order to stop the investigation. He noted that it made him uncomfortable. Well, good job being uncomfortable. Uh, I... I don't know what to tell you. But anyway, um, were, prom uh, were President Trump uh, deciding to pardon Flynn for potential involvement, even potential involvement in, in some sort of Russian collusion, he has the power to do that. Uh, you can't stop him. You can't. No one can stop the president from doing this. And uh, if there are any of you out there who are confused... Uh, and think that there should be some limit to the power to pardon, like maybe in, in terms of treason or something like that. Like, right, uh, well, can the president really pardon someone who undermined the election process of the United States to benefit the president? Yes, absolutely. There is no exception to the pardon power except for impeachment. That's the only exception that was allowed. The founders actually discussed this and debated the pardoning power and how far it should extend. And there was a proposal, there was a proposal to include treason along with impeachment, and that proposal was rejected. Uh, the language adopted only limited the power of the pardon to cases of impeachment. So, uh, again, in sum, Trump has unlimited plenary power to pardon everybody involved. He can stop investigations. He can fire the special counsel. He can do just about anything to stop uh, the probes. And he hasn't. So uh, for those of you who consider Trump to be an authoritarian, like I do, in many instances, he's, he's very authoritarian. Uh, I don't think that's a secret or controversial in any sort of way. However, he's not a tyrant yet. He may become one. I don't know. But uh, currently, he has not done any of these things that are well within his authority to do um, to, stop, to stop these impeachment hearings against him. Or not impeachment hearings. The uh, investigation into possible collusion, whatever that means, it's not really defined in election law. 
what this means. Um, but whatever uh, allegations of collusion with Russia, uh, Trump could stop all of it. The only question, and this is a question, let me be clear on that, is whether or not Trump can pardon himself. Many people think that the power to pardon would uh, have some sort of, has an inherent restriction, like a logical uh, bar on, on pardoning yourself. That's not a settled question in, in any sort of way. We haven't run into it, right? Presidents haven't uh, pardoned themselves. And this is, this is a self-correcting problem. Um, pardoning yourself is massively damaging politically. And that's where um, we have a lot of, we have a lot of powers of government that are, uh, that are corrected simply by the, the power to, or the, uh, the power of the, the fourth branch of government, which is, which is the people, right? The, um, we have elected officials. We don't have, um, crowned, uh, mandated officials or anything like that. Everybody, everybody eventually faces the acts of the public. And if the public votes you out of office, you're done. If they vote to keep you in, you're golden. You're good. It's, it's very, very rare to overturn the will of the public. So um, Trump pardoning himself would be really damaging. However, not out of question, which makes, uh, you know, the timing of all of this becomes important for his opposition because were he impeached in his second term, or I shouldn't say were he impeached, were he charged with a crime in his second term, um, he could pardon himself theoretically. Uh, and, and who cares about the political damage that would be done to Trump? I mean, maybe the Republican Party cares, I think. But, uh, you know, as, as far as Trump's concerned, um, that wouldn't be damaging. However, we do have this power of impeachment, and there's a hint that we may have the ability to remove someone from office without impeachment. Uh, it's generally thought of as being reserved for people who are injured, sick, um, comatose, other ways incapacitated or incompetent um, due to mental illness or something like that. However, there's nothing stating, uh, nothing so limiting in the removal power of, of Congress uh, to remove a president without a crime um, just based on their determination that he's unfit. This is floated around a couple articles uh, in news stories, but, you know, largely unexplored territory. Anyway. Back to this. Back to stupid HuffPo. HuffPo is attacking the presidential power of the pardon. They're using the turkey pardoning ceremony, which is just dumb. Don't pardon turkeys. Eat them. Anyway, they're using this, uh, this ceremony to kind of take a jab at Trump, to remind the public that he's under investigation, despite a dearth of evidence that any of this occurred. Oh my goodness. Oh, uh, by the way, I hate to do this. I hate to ask for comments all the time, but in trying to feel out what you guys are interested in, um, let me know in the comments, if anyone wants me to go through the Papadopoulos, uh, plea agreement. Um, if you want me to go through like the Mueller, uh, indict, the indictments of, uh, what's, what's their stupid names? Uh, Paul Manafort and, um, and his buddy whose name eludes me and I don't really care to look it up. Uh, but if you want me to go through things like that, I'm happy to do that too. Um, the Papadopoulos coverage from the media was abysmal. Um, the opinions of their experts, oh, oh my God. Uh, they're, they're terrible, uh, overblown, inflated, all sorts of stuff. Um, if you want me to do a video on that, I would love to do a Papadopoulos video if people want to hear about it. Anyway, um, the whole idea is that you have these these people who are being charged with whatever. Uh, Trump has the power to pardon any of them, and he's going to use it strategically, right? Uh, an overusage of it would be politically damaging, potentially, and this is early on his presidency. He doesn't necessarily want to jeopardize that. But um, were he to uh, strategically pardon certain people, um, he could do so if he thought there was some sort of benefit to it. It doesn't really matter. There's no restriction on it. None. The only check on the presidential power to pardon is you and me in the voting booth. 
So the media makes a big deal out of his power to pardon specifically for that, turning public opinion. But, uh, yeah, Trump noted in July he had complete power to pardon. He's right. He's right on that, of course, except in matters of impeachment. But uh, the power is unquestionably unquestionable. It's unchecked. Um, the other branches of government have nothing to do with it, no matter how much the media wants them to. Uh, so I wanted to kind of just give you a rundown of that um, because uh, as, as these news stories keep coming out, keep talking about this Russian collusion thing, and we keep not seeing any evidence or movement on it, uh, we may see something, you know, as, as Mueller attempts to crack Manafort, uh, if Manafort knows anything, as they attempt to get some statements out of Papadopoulos that open doors. Uh, and, I mean, good luck. Uh, that guy... Uh, anyway. <laughs> the whole situation's funny to me. But, um... As we get further along in this investigation, uh, we may see more and more indictments come out. Trump has the power to pardon any of them. His potential personal involvement would have nothing to restrict that. Uh, Trump has the power to stop the investigation at any time. He has not done so. And it's important to remember these things because a tyrant would just halt all investigation. Like, that's, that's how tyrants work. Uh, that's why... They don't, they don't do so well in a in a representative republic like we have. But anyway, I'm I'm rambling and babbling. Uh, hope you guys have a good Thanksgiving. Um, let me drop me a note in the comments. Uh, let me know if you want to do if you want me to do videos like this. If you'd like to see some really in depth uh, law explaining videos on on Papadopoulos, uh, that I think that could be kind of interesting. Um, or any other constitutional provisions or presidential powers. Uh, as a brief note, um, I'm not personally a huge fan of Trump. Um, not, a, not a Trump voter. Not opposed to him either. Uh, just kind of indifferent. Um, I'm interested to see where things go. But uh, I think he is an interesting animal because uh, we have been operating under the assumption that presidents are weak. Uh, Trump is setting himself up as a strongman president, and I'm curious to see how that plays out for him. Because we, we take a lot of things just, uh, just because, and we don't have to. We've given the Justice Department a ton of power. Uh, not the, the Supreme Court, really. And the lower courts, uh, more specifically. We've given them a ton of power, um, and I think that we're going to see some challenges to that coming up. And Trump seems to be the catalyst of those things. So I'm interested to see what happens. But uh, the media is is playing into a lot of assumptions that we've held. But these assumptions aren't really founded anywhere. So, um, again, have a good Thanksgiving, guys. Hope you enjoy this video. I know it's off subject. And uh, let me know what you like or hate in the comments. And we'll refine them and keep going. So, uh, yeah, have a good night.